What's up guys and welcome to the channel. My name's Micah and today we're gonna take a look at our SIG Romeo 5 compact red dot sight. This is an extremely popular red dot sight, uh, probably for its ultra budget friendly price point. It has quite the reliable track record as well. So we picked one up, so we're just gonna kind of go over the features and specs, what I like about this sight, what drew me to it, and then at the end of the video, we'll decide if this is the right red dot optic for you. So. Let's dive right in. And before we get too far along, I'll show you that our rifle is unloaded here so you can see that there is nothing in our chamber. Everything is clear and safe. And of course our magazine is empty as well. So safety is first guys, that's extremely important and we always wanna be on top of that. So like we were saying, this is an extremely popular red dot optic, uh, probably for the price point. Uh, I got this brand new for $149 at my local Shields store. Uh, today, at the time of filming this video, Amazon has them brand new for $126. I wanted to get this from my local store just because if I had any problems with it, I could just bring it right back, switch it out for something else, but I have had zero problems and I'm absolutely in love with this little site here so let me tell you what I like about it. There's kind of five different things that drew me to the SIG Romeo 5. First of which was that price point. I mean you can spend over a thousand dollars on a red dot site or under a hundred dollars and everything in between. We were putting this sight on our Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Sport 2. This is a $700 rifle. I didn't see any reason to get a $700 optic. So I do love the price point of this sight. I mean, it's tough to find a better value out there as far as features you get, you know, quality and reliability for dollars spent. This Romeo 5 has to be one of the best values out there. The second thing that drew me to this site was the size of it. I mean, this is a very compact red dot site. You know, it's not very large. It doesn't add a bunch of weight to your rifle. And it's pretty much exactly what I was looking for as far as size and dimensions go. The third thing that really drew me to the Romeo 5 was that it uses SIG's MOTAC uh, system. So that's a motion activated system that SIG uses on this Romeo 5. So your rifle can sit idle just in your gun safe, under your bed, wherever it may be. And upon grabbing your rifle, when this sight senses any motion at all, it turns on to the previously saved setting whatever brightness setting you had it on and you are ready to go. That feature is pure gold to me that I can just have my rifle sitting there and upon grabbing it, it is absolutely ready to go. The sight just turns on and when I'm not using it, the sight will turn itself off saving the battery life, extending that. Not all of your red dot optics are going to have that motion activated system. And I absolutely love that. That was a huge factor in why I went for the Romeo 5. Another feature that drew me to the Romeo 5 is that it takes the batteries on the side here of the optic. So you can switch out your battery without removing the optic from the gun. Uh, some of these red dot optics, you will have to remove the optic from the gun to switch out the battery and then you have to put your sight back on the gun, re-zero everything in and nothing about that is attractive to me. So I do like that it uses just the side loader there. It makes battery changes very quick, very easy easy. But you won't be replacing batteries very often with that motion activated system. And the last thing that kind of drew me to the Romeo 5 is just the overall simplicity of the sight. You know, you have your windage and elevation adjustments here just on the side and the top. They're very intuitive. Uh, you have your brightness settings, your positive symbol and negative symbol. That will adjust the brightness of your reticle, your red dot. And beyond that, there's nothing else you have to worry about. This thing is just so simple, so reliable, and excellent quality overall. So now we'll get a little bit more nitty gritty with the specs on this thing. So the actual sight itself weighs 5.1 ounces. So it does have an aluminum housing here that has a very nice black finish to it. So that aluminum housing kind of gets us to that five ounces of weight. You know, if it were a polymer housing, it'd probably be an ounce or so lighter. Uh, some red dot optics will use a polymer housing. Um, 
Five ounces is nothing in the grand scheme of things, and I would much prefer the aluminum over a polymer housing on my optic. That just kind of gives me the feeling that this is gonna be a little bit more heavy duty, maybe hold up uh, to some torch or a little bit better than a polymer housing. This site does have an IPX7 waterproof rating, so it can be submerged underwater up to a meter deep for at least 30 minutes. A lot of people have put that to the test and found that this site can be submerged for days on end with no leaking or fogging happening to the site itself. The red dot, the actual reticle on this site is going to be a two MOA reticle. So at 100 yards, that site is going to cover a two inch circle. So in the grand scheme of things, uh, compared to a lot of other red dots, that's pretty precise. That's a pretty small red dot. Um, and that was attractive to me. I wanted something more small uh, that I could get those pinpoint accurate shots. The site does have 10 different brightness settings to it that we can adjust just with the top buttons there. Eight of those settings are kind of designed for daytime, daylight use. Two of them are night vision settings. What I have found is that the top two brightest settings on this your red dot reticle seemingly gets larger because that red dot gets so bright. I mean, in full blown daylight, you know, on the brightest setting, you have no problem at all seeing that red dot. But on those top two settings, it seems like that reticle gets to about a three MOA and then about a six MOA setting. It seemingly gets larger, and I'll show you that in a second here. We'll go through the settings on it. Sig says that the battery life on this Romeo 5 is up to 40,000 hours. Now, if you use your optic for eight hours every single day on the brightest setting that you can, obviously you're not gonna get that 40,000 hours out of it. It's gonna be much less. But in regular use, you know, with the site turning itself off with that motion activated system, I think it's safe to assume that you will get thousands and thousands of hours out of this battery. 40,000 hours equates to four and a half years, if you are wondering. As far as the adjustments on this site go, they're in one MOA increments. So at 100 yards, one click, whether it's for windage or elevation, is going to adjust you one inch on your target. So that makes for very quick adjustments. You know, with this having a two MOA reticle, I don't really see a need for half MOA adjustments. I think the one MOA is just fine and it was very easy to get this site zeroed in extremely quick. I got it zeroed in in about 20 shots. As far as the details on that motion activated system, the MOTAC system that SIG uses, so they say that the site will turn itself off in 120 seconds if it doesn't sense any motion. Now that system is extremely sensitive. There's people who have had their rifle with their sight on it in their gun safe and their gun safe will have a dehumidifier on it and just the slight vibration of that dehumidifier has been enough to keep their sight on. So if you do have a gun safe that has a dehumidifier, you might have to turn your sight off. You know, that slight vibration might be enough to keep your sight on. So just know that this is extremely sensitive. It's not like you have to shake your rifle or anything to get that sight to turn on. I mean, just barely touching it, barely moving your rifle at all, the sight will turn itself on and then should turn itself off in about 120 seconds. So the actual lens on this sight is going to be 20 millimeters uh, in diameter. So, some sites, some red dot optics are gonna have a wider lens in that you can acquire that sight just a little bit quicker. You know, we did have iron sights on this rifle here. So compared to the one millimeter hole I was looking through, a 20 millimeter lens is literally a hundred times better. So that works perfectly fine for me. Obviously there is red dot sights out there that you could get a wider lens, but I've had no problem with that 20 millimeter lens. I think that works just fine and then it does contribute to just that overall compact size, you know, that smaller package that we get with this sight. 
So at the end of the day, it's all relative, I suppose. Well, and we'll just go over kind of what you get when you get this site. So like we said, the packaging's very nice. If the packaging is trash, I get the feeling that your site is going to be trash as well. Uh, everything is packaged very nicely on this optic here. So of course you get your manual. Uh, like we said, the site is very simple. It's very intuitive. I don't think you'll need this for anything, but some people clearly do upon reading reviews use online. People are constantly putting the battery in backwards, you know, not reading how to turn on the site initially. Uh, just kind of the dumbest thing. So you do get a manual if you need it. You get a small polishing cloth there that you can keep your optic very nice and clean. The battery will come in a separate little bag. It is not in the optic right off the bat. And then you can just take that little side cover on it. It just screws off. So counterclockwise, take that off. You will put that battery in with the positive side facing outward. You get a little tool as well. So on one side, it is going to have a T10 Torx bit. So you will use that bit to tighten down your sight on your Picatinny rail there. Uh, it does have a little flathead screwdriver looking spot. You could use that to adjust your windage and elevation knobs. But those knobs, they do have a cover on both of them there. So I've seen all kinds of people at the range turning these and they're just turning the cover. They're not turning the actual adjustment itself. So you can just unscrew these little covers here and the covers themselves have a little adjustment tool on them. So it's almost like the covers have a little flathead screwdriver almost looking piece. So you can use the cover itself to adjust your windage and elevation. You can see that there's a little spot there. So you could use the caps or you could use the tool. Either one of them works just fine. And then you do get two mounts with this optic. So you get a low profile mount. If say we were putting this on some sort of a target pistol, maybe a shotgun, um, you know, I could see using this low profile mount. Since we are putting this on an AR-15 that does have an A2 front sight, we were using the higher riser that it comes with. So this riser is gonna be 1.4 inches high, so it perfectly co-witnesses your iron sights of your AR-15 rifles. So with this higher riser, your red dot reticle will perfectly sit at the top of your front A2 post. It doesn't print on the post, but just right above it. So if for any reason our sight died, we can always find our iron sights and co-witness those through our red dot optic there. So I do like that. So now how much abuse can this sight take? Well, quite a bit, you know, I've watched quite a few different reviews. Uh, by very credible YouTubers, and some of them have really put the site through the ringer. You know, as far as recoil tests, there's been people who have this on a 12 gauge shotgun for years on end, and it perfectly stays zeroed. You know, there's some people who have these on larger caliber rifles, say a 308 or something like that, for example, and it handles the recoil just fine. Uh, it does not negatively affect the sight in any which way. So it can handle the recoil of any gun you were to put it on just fine. There's been people who have thrown this in a tub of water for days on end and no fogging, no leaking happened. Some people have frozen them in a block of ice and then let the block of ice thaw out, pull their sight out, throw it on their gun. Everything is perfectly zeroed and works just as it should. I've seen plenty of impact tests where people will just throw this against the ground or a brick wall dozens of times and then throw it back on their gun. Everything works just as it should. There's one gentleman on YouTube here, Alabama Arsenal. He shot his Romeo 5 with a 12 gauge shotgun. Like set the sight out on his target and shot it with a shotgun. Put it right back on his gun. It was perfectly zeroed no negative effects to the site itself. So I think this optic is kind of towards the top, you know, uh, compared to everything else, as far as the abuse and the torture that it can take. I mean, this is one rugged, sturdy little sight, that's for sure. Well, so now I'll let you guys look through the sight here and we'll kind of go through the brightness settings on it. So there you guys can kind of see our optic there. It sits right on top of that A2 post. It's very easy to see. So this is brightness setting number eight, we'll say. So there's still two that are gonna be a little bit brighter. So let me turn that up here. 
So once we go to nine, you can see that that red dot definitely got brighter and seemingly bigger. And then when we go to 10, even bigger. So the red dot itself looks significantly bigger on the brightest setting as opposed to number nine, as opposed to number eight. So I like that eighth setting, you know, that really is your two MOA dot. But when I go up to setting number nine, seems like it goes up to about a three. And then when I go up to setting number 10, the brightest, I mean, that dot gets fairly big. So if you're in full daylight, you know, close range targets, I can see having your setting on that brightest one but otherwise, for most of my shooting, I'm just sitting on about setting number eight. That seems to be the most precise um, setting for me, so I kind of like that. So at the end of the day, should you get this red dot optic? Yes, absolutely. This has given me zero problems. It is very tough to beat the value that you get here. You know, as far as all the features that you get, that motion activated system, you know, the different brightness settings, the ease of changing the battery with that side loader, you know, that the windage and elevation adjustments are just so easy on this. I can't say enough good things about this optic. You know, if you don't need any magnification, if you don't need some huge wide lens on there, you know, I don't see any reason to not get this Romeo 5. Now, one rumor that I will debunk really quick is a lot of people say that this is just a hollow sun sight that has SIG logos on it. So the deal with that, this sight is manufactured at a hollow sun factory but SIG approached that Holosun factory in China with their blueprints for this site. So it is not a Holosun site with SIG logos on it. This is totally a SIG site, SIG engineered from the ground up. And just to get it to that 149, you know, or cheaper price point, they approached the Holosun factory and had them make it for SIG. So it's a SIG site made at a hollow sun factory. It is not a hollow sun site with just SIG logos on it. At the time of doing this video, this site is rated 4.9 out of five stars on Google. Okay, you will find a few bad reviews out there, but I just can't say that they're credible. I mean, some of these bad reviews, these one star reviews that I've seen about this site will be from people saying that they went through five of these and none of them worked. I just don't think there's an ounce of truth to that. Like you're telling me that you bought one site, it didn't work. You got another one, it didn't work. Third time, your site didn't work and you were like, well, let me get that same site two more times. Like there is no way, that is a dirty lie. There is not an ounce of truth to that. Some of the other bad reviews I've seen, people will say that right out of the box, their site did not work. I will see a reply to that comment that says, did you put the battery in correct? And then boom, that person never replied at all. But they never took their one star review down either. So I think there's just some goofballs out there who didn't read the manual, didn't put their battery in correct, I don't know, but I cannot find any problems with this optic and every credible YouTuber who I've seen review this optic says that it's absolutely awesome and they just love them. And uh, yeah, I only have good things to say about it. I would absolutely go get one of these if you're up in the air. If you want your first red dot optic, gosh, for $150 or less, you can totally get this and it will do everything you need it to. You know, if you don't need four different reticles to peruse through, if you don't need a holographic site, if you just want a red dot to quickly and easily acquire your target much faster than say iron sights, the SIG Romeo 5 is the one to get. You know, I think I'm gonna get a couple more of these. I like them so much, I'm gonna put them on a few of my other different rifles. Yeah, five stars in my opinion. Love this Romeo 5, everything works so good on it. I'm in love with it. So like the video if this helped you out, subscribe if you wanna see more, and until next time, have a great night guys.